Welcome to the first devlog of Robot Invasion on Planet 9. I've been working on this game for a couple of years now in my spare time. It's got quite a bit left to do, but I think it's starting to take shape now. I'm a professional software engineer by day, not game dev related, so that helps me out a lot with the coding side, but there's so many other hats to wear when making a game that it still leaves plenty of challenges. The game is set in the future. Earth has lost all radio contact with a colony of scientists on an alien planet. They decide to send a space mission to the planet to investigate what's happened. You play as the rover. Your mission is to find out what's happened to the scientists, restore communications and report back to Earth. Once there you quickly see that the planet is overrun with killer robots. You try to find the scientists, but they're all dead. No, they're not all dead. Some of them survived, but only enough for them not to overload the graphics processor. You help the scientists get back on their feet and run missions for them. You scavenge parts to upgrade yourself. It's a small open world game. You can follow the main quest line or you can do your own thing. Exploration is a big part of the game as that's what I enjoy when I'm playing games myself. I'm adding as much secret locations and hidden loot as I can around the place. There are various side quests you can partake in like collecting rare seeds for Bob the Botanist or tracking down lost people and fixing broken scientific equipment. I don't know if I can call this an RPG. Those are what inspired me to make it. It definitely has some RPG elements but it's not a full blown RPG. How many times can I say RPG in one sentence? Some areas of the map are out of reach until you upgrade your rover's engine power to make it up the steep slopes to the high levels. This makes a natural barrier for putting harder enemies where the player needs to be a high level to tackle them. The core mechanics of the game hasn't really changed that much in a long time. Most of the systems in place were developed relatively quickly. The thing that takes the time is getting it to look as good as it needs to. The game's gone through quite a few iterations in terms of looks to get here. I don't know if it'll change again dramatically from here. I guess it depends on the feedback I get. If you've got any, please give your thoughts in a comment below. I spent weeks recently redoing the map as I wanted to have more variety. I'm on about the 10th iteration at the moment. My maps up to this point have been good in most areas, but some sections could be seen as boring. This new one is much more interesting all round with hilly areas, beach areas, cliff edges, and a volcano with a lake on a high plateau. This is an old version of the game with even lower poly graphics and lots of jarring textures which I eventually dropped. I was reluctant to add geometry to the models as I was worried that mobiles couldn't handle it and slow down too much. This is a free to play mobile game so having good performance is critical, especially since I want it to run on low end devices not bleeding edge stuff that most people don't have. My phone is pretty basic so it's actually quite good for testing, it grinds to a halt if the game's not optimised. I did eventually remake all the models and added more detail. I figured it's a balancing act. Too simple and performance will be good but the graphics won't stand out and no one will play your game. Too high and it'll look good but performance will suck and no one will play your game. In this version I simplified and removed some textures but I still wasn't happy with it. It looked flat and uninterested. So I spent a month experimenting with Godot Dot's baked light map node. I was blown away with how much life it immediately gave the whole world. After that there was no going back. I'm a solo developer, so I do all the coding, 3D modelling, art and music in the game myself. I wouldn't really recommend doing everything yourself as from experience I find that you just keep going back and redoing or improving the stuff you've done previously. You save a lot of time using asset stores and free resources, but well, I'm doing this as a learning exercise so I'd rather do it the hard way despite it taking a hundred times longer. One thing I'm not taking credit for is the game engine. For that I'm using Godot. Dot. I've done extensive research on the pronunciation of that so I'm pretty sure it's right. I'm using Godot 3.5 as Godot 4 only supports the Vulkan renderer for now which rules it out for low end mobile devices. I'm using the Gless 2 renderer for this game as I found Gless 3 to be pretty much unusable for 3D on mobile as it's just too slow, the frame rate is terrible. Gless 2 is actually pretty good, the frame rate is readable and it runs pretty smooth. I've done a lot of work getting it to perform well on low-end devices. Real-time shadow is just not possible. I'm using texture baking on static objects and blob shadows on all NPCs to make up for this. Blob shadows are just drawing a fake shadow underneath the NPC where a raycast intercepts the ground below. The fake shadow's position and angle is adjusted to match the ground. There's a background thread that runs constantly checking distances of items like trees, grass, collectibles, enemies, NPCs in relation to the player and hides them if they're over a certain distance. That reduces the number of draw calls the GPU needs to perform. On top of this, I've split the world into several zones that get loaded when the player is near and unloads afterwards. This is because I've found that the number of nodes in the scene tree can really affect the frame rate even if the objects aren't visible. So with the background thread and the zoning, the performance has massively improved. There's quite a lot left to do, most of the UI needs jazzing up. This is just placeholder art at the minute. There's a rover console where you can view information on active and completed missions, inventory and stuff like that. There's also the upgrade matic which needs work. It's functional, but needs to looks improved. You use it to upgrade or level up your rover using parts you've scavenged from destroyed enemies or found in containers around the map. 
I have a basic plan of the whole storyline, but I need to flesh out the missions. I've written this system which makes adding missions really quick and minimal code. Each mission has its own script file which contains almost just the high level actions of the mission steps. Most of the functionality is implemented in the base class that each mission inherits from. It's just your usual object oriented programming, but it keeps everything nice and organised. I can add a custom initialization and physics process function to any step if it needs to do something not handled by default in the base class, like spawn some enemies or check if you have a specific inventory item before moving on to the next mission step. I've also added downhill racing missions dotted around. These are just side quests and are not important to the game storyline, but it adds a bit of interest and they're fun to do. I figured, you've got four wheels so you may as well throw yourself off the side of a mountain. Who wouldn't want to do that in real life? It all adds to the variety that I'm trying to create in the game. So that's the story so far, please leave some feedback and a comment below if you have any. If you found this useful or would like me to do more, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe. Anyway, that's it for now, catch you later.